we got some work to do in here. Uh, I get a lot of wild hairs up my posterior rear. My rear rear is basically what I just said. Uh, where I'm like, I wanna change stuff. So now that we've built the simulator rig, uh, I want to redo this part of the room over here. So what we've had so far is, this was like our testing area, the 65 inch BFGD um, ASUS panel and all that. We need multiple testing stations. We need an AMD rig, we need an Intel rig, we need to be able to have a fan testing area where the fans can be plugged in, RGB plugs and stuff, just ready to go without having to like Jimmy rig stuff everywhere. So today what we're gonna do is we are gonna build the mega desk of testing area to be followed up by quad desk, which is actually only made out of three desks. So we have these shelves right here, which are from Ikea. I uh, was thinking about putting them over here, but now that we have the sim rig done, we need a place to set up the rig and a computer and monitor and stuff for that and VR and whatnot. And I was thinking about putting that on this wall, but I may not do that now. Might, we might just have to stick that somewhere else for the time being, maybe out in the warehouse, um, which is getting really full again, which I'm not happy with. But we also need to clean up this side of the room. So typically you guys just see like, when the table's here angled, you just see that and that's it. But we need to now like have this be functional and then this will be a full functioning backdrop with like multiple monitors and all that. We need to have power strips like on top of the table, not underneath. So we have our cable managed cables, but also strips on top. We can easily plug stuff in when we're testing monitors and all that and have different types of cables ready to go. It needs to be functional, neat, but functional. And that's, so that's the goal for today. So we're gonna start with getting all this stuff sort of just move to this half of the room and we're gonna build these gladiator workbenches which are nine feet long each. So we're gonna have 18 feet of workbench that we're gonna be using for this. And I went with this because it has a wood top that's similar-ish to the color wood tones we already have in there. And then obviously this will be able to handle the weight. 3,000 pounds apparently, so it can hold half of me, which would be awesome. Uh, oh, I take that back, they're eight foot tables. So we're gonna have 16 feet, I can't math. So we're gonna move that over, make room, build two of these, put these against the wall, get our ethernets there, get our power and all that stuff. Dang it, Nick, we should have got some more power strips while you were there today at Lowe's. That's okay, when we do stuff like this, it's never complete until you have five trips to the hardware store. Minimum. Minimum. Keep going. Keep going. I'm requesting assistance! Because it's 161 pounds, they're almost a fill. Hey, it's more than a fill. Excuse really? Excuse you. Huh? Oh, that's right, 180 is when you were like, Ugh. It's like a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> I probably don't need two of these, but I wanted it to be mega desk. Yeah. So basically you just have one hole hanging out <laughs> on the bottom. These bolts look like what clip art bolts look like. <laughs> you know, when you look up gen, like bolt.png. <laughs> look how much care they put in mounting that. Gladiator! It's all crooked. <laughs> also, it gives us plenty of desk space for when we have our LAN parties once every six years. Go through my folding chair. I don't think we need to film this again. It's just the same thing. Again. <laughs> okay. Dang, look at how long Jay's wood is. Okay, so as you can see right now, I've got our Alex drawers that were floating around here underneath there. I need to get another set right there so it's uniform. But we've got the double wides here on casters and then another one there. So you can see it's starting to look like a desk. Um, but here's the thing, you can see there's a gap here. It's not quite perfectly even. I still have to align them, you know, foot-wise to get the height to the foot set. I think positionally, that's about where I'm gonna leave them. Pretty good gap from the door over there. But I have these uh, strap materials here, I don't know what else to call them, that I will be tying the tables together underneath. So I'll be doing the screws on one side having someone on the other end push it as close to the table as they can and then putting a screw in. This will allow them to stay exactly on the same height, then we can adjust the feet. I have to do it on both sides. And then um, 
we won't have an issue of like gapping. This is also what I did at home with my L-shaped desk. So that the L, the perpendicular desk, they would always stay perfectly at the same height. Once those were tied together, then I adjusted the feet to make them level. You can let go. So because I can't get to the rear back there because there's no overhang, I can go diagonal between the brackets like that and that will still work the same way. So I'll put one screw in, that way I can pivot it, put the other screw in and then do all six and we should be fine at that point. Okay. So it's definitely more level now. Like if you were to put something across there, I guess. It's not a straight edge, but hey, it works. Speaking of which, this is the other part. So underneath each desk, because that circuit and that circuit are on dedicated 20 amp circuits, and I have two, like one behind each desk, which is accidental, I did not plan that. I will have one of these mounted underneath each desk. And then I'm still gonna have another power strip, a small power strip on top of each desk for if we have to plug something in to test it or whatever. We don't go crawling under the desk and stuff like that because we're fat around here and crawling under desk sucks. So it take a while to kind of get everything. So nice, Nick. Nice. <laughs> it take a while to get everything set how we want it, but uh, at the very least, we can make some progress here. We've been talking about doing this mega desk for like months at the, at this point. So you know, I'm just on standard J time. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> NZXT's Build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. Okay, so we're gonna probably keep the 65 inch BFGD just cause it's it's good for 4K testing. It's also good for video and stuff. Like I te technically I kind of would like to wall mount it, but with the amount of sound insulation I have in these walls, uh, it'd be very difficult to snake it down even with a, a fish tape. So it just is what it is for now. Like I would, I need to be very specific on what hardware I'm using like for monitors and stuff because I want to start testing like ultra wide and stuff so I'm not that multiple monitors and obviously this takes up a lot of space so of those feet but I did order two um, open air test benches that I will probably do a review on because they're pretty neat I'm not gonna say which ones they are yet but when it comes in I'll probably do a review on that I'll just have to like two-sided tape or something with this like right here because I want a power strip here available like I said, if we were testing something that has to be plugged in, we have an easy access to it right there. Nice. We can even run our cables through it, like our cable and your net through there. Uh. I'm sure by now people have commented, it's not the same color wood as the rest of your wood. You're right. <laughs> you guys want to know what that big CRT is for? over there. It's an upcoming video that's gonna be kind of fun. It's such a weird table right now. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> we decided it needs to go back on this table. <laughs> so the idea is we have the driver's seat, passenger seat. <laughs> the biggest side part ever. Yeah. So because this is a sit stand, we decided since our uh, rig right now is on, is on sliders, we're gonna probably get the casters for it so we can roll around easier, but it's on sliders. We're gonna have a VR set up for it. But if it's like, wanna screw around and not use VR, maybe somebody's not comfortable using VR if they wanna come play around with it, we can just raise the height on that, scoot this over under it, and then you have the 65 inch like right here so that you can drive with the big screen, which will be even nicer. So this whole area is dedicated basically to this sim rig. And then also too, this is, we're gonna use the Origin PC, the small form factor PC that we did the review on. I can't remember the exact, uh, what they called that. But anyway, it's got a, I think it has a 4080 in there and it's 13900K, it's like, pretty insane on its capabilities. So it just doubles as another gaming rig. Cause every now and then we'll have friends come over and kind of hang out for the day and we just play games and screw around. So there's another rig for that. And then we'll have a wall of rigs that people can technically use even though they're, this needs to maintain work standards, whatever those are. So I'm dying to sit on this and, and use it, but I haven't even wired it up yet because I want to wire everything to this so that it has only one power plug coming off of it, off the power strip, and one USB plug going into the computer. That way when we scoot it around, it's got enough slack and, and stuff on it so we can unplug it, move it in position, plug it back in, whether it be like right here on the front, whatever. So, 
But the problem is I ordered the stuff I needed, my USB hub and the extension cable and the, the longer USB 3.0, USB A to USB B cable. And guess what Amazon lost today? That package. They're like, it, we, we don't know where it's at, you can get a refund. And I'm like, I don't want a refund, I want the product. That fan right there will probably maintain somewhere nearby to blow it. Actually, it probably makes sense to have it like right in front blowing that way, that's the ball fan. And then we're gonna have right here, I'm actually gonna mount right here, one of those thin blower style fans that's like designed for mounting under a desk or whatever, right here to just blow at you to keep you cool. Because believe it or not, especially when you're in VR, when you're driving, it gets, you get sweaty because you're moving and stuff, especially when you're pushing on load cell brakes and whatnot. So cooling is important. We uh, wanna keep the headset from getting as sweaty as possible. We're also gonna have the sanitizing station too, so that we're gonna have like disinfecting wipes and cleansing wipes and <laughs> rags and all that to keep it all clean. And I'm feeling like whatever headset we put on here, we need to get multiple different face pads that need to be labeled. Phil, Jay, Nick. I'll just bring my own head unit. <laughs> well, you can also, you, well, no, you can also like. Uh, but if you, you, we don't, if you don't have the exact same head unit, it's a whole different setup. Oh, no, we just get like a ten pack of like the silicone ones. Oh, and yeah. then, I hate the silicone ones. Oh, okay. Well, then you can because uh, it's all like slippery and stuff when it gets sweaty. Then you can use the the foam since it's your headset anyway. <laughs> then I'll, we'll use the silicone. But my point is, we can have different face the face mask for yeah. everyone involved. But I think having that much airflow blowing on us will help us keep from getting super sweaty anyway. And why they haven't integrated active cooling inside headsets yet is beyond me. So anyway, I think this is where we're gonna go ahead and end this video. Um, it's already late in the afternoon. It's time to start wrapping up, but here we go. Now we've got a dedicated sim rig area. We've got what's coming together now is a dedicated testing area. We'll be mounting some stuff to the walls too to make it a little bit more like a shop set, but also a very functional set. And you, you can see out here now where we put that other rack. So that triple unit I put out here, this is where I'm gonna put all my water cooling gear, screws, nuts and bolts and odds and ends, uh, types of tubs and containers, all my water cooling radiators and fittings and blocks and all that will go here. So we can free up shelf space over there uh, on this. I was gonna initially do like actual cabinetry, doors open and close, but I think for now, I think this will be fine. So anyway, and then this guy here, this is like the 20, this is like the new version of walking into the classroom and being like, sick, we're watching a movie for class today. Um, this is just that 55 inch Vizio TV that I've had forever. It's a 4K TV. It's terrible as a gaming monitor, but what it's perfect as is having this, like if I need to show you something that's happening on screen or whatever now, I can have this giant thing, or we can roll it around and literally use it as a test monitor. If I have something out here, I'm building a rig, like does it boot, plug it in, if we get an image, it's just easy to maneuver this thing around. And check it out. Nick even 3D printed a remote control holder for it. Anyway, that's the end. Things are slowly kind of coming back together here. All these cases and stuff that we've received since we did the yard sale has just taken up all the space again, and I'm getting so sick of that. But anyway, time to go. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.